So, we started on uh, transistors and we saw the physics of it, how the charge carriers move across the junctions and all that. Today, uh, we will be talking more on uh, its applications. So, let us first do some recap of what we did in the last lecture. So, bipolar junction transistor, this is the name. It is junction transistor because uh, you have two p n junctions and bipolar, you have two of them is made of back to back two p n junctions grown on the same semiconductor base. So, you have a, a schematic drawing like this, you have a thin region in between and then these two junctions here and on the two sides you have a, another type of doping. So, you can have this uh, so called n p n or p n p transistors, everything is doped on the same semiconductor wafer by proper alloying or proper diffusion of dopants and in the right concentrations and all those things. So, this is the variety, the middle region is lightly doped, this is very important and is very thin, this is also very important and that is known as base. One side of that base is heavily doped, which we called emitter and the other side is moderately doped and that is called collector. So, this is a base, this portion which is sandwiched between the two parts, this is collector and this is emitter, geometrical dimensions also collector, it is slightly wider in general than emitter. But the basic distinguishing factor is the doping. The emitter is heavily doped as compared to collector and base is of course, very lightly doped. Now, this is a symbol. This is the symbol. You have uh, three elements 1, 2 and 3. They are put in a circle in general and on one of these lines you have this arrow and that arrow tells that this is the emitter. So, this is the emitter part and this is the collector part. You have metallic contacts, so that uh, outside batteries, resistances, capacitors wind at base or collector or uh, emitter. So, you have those uh, junctions from where you can join your external circuit and this uh, arrow tells whether it is NPN or PNP. So, the arrow is put on the emitter from P to N directions, P to N directions. So, if it is N P N transistor, this is N and this is P, this is N. So, on the emitter, the arrow is from P to N. Similarly, if it is PNP transistor, this is P, this is N and this is again P. So, the arrow is from P direction p to n direction and essentially it shows you the direction of the current when the junction is forward biased. Which junction? This emitter base junction. Okay. Then uh, normally this emitter base junction is forward biased and the collector base junction is reversed bias in normal operations many of the applications. Two batteries are used for biasing these two junctions. So, if you have two junctions, let us say you have this, uh, you have this NPN. Most of the discussion that I had done is uh, was with reference to NPN transistor. The entire physics is the same. One can talk in terms of uh, N PNP transistors. The roles of electrons and holes will be different, swapped. So, if you have this uh, n p n transistor, this will be the arrow. Then uh, in this uh, emitter side, if I put this emitter base junction, this has to be biased, forward biased. So, if this is p, you have to put a positive battery here, some resistance of course, and it goes like this. So, this junction is forward biased. So, this is a battery used for forward biasing this one. Then the collector part is also to be biased and now collector base is to be reverse biased and therefore, this is remember this is n here and this is p here n here. So, again you put a positive battery here 
and so on some resistance and so this is two batteries are needed for biasing two circuit. If these two batteries have a common terminal and that is connected to the emitter as I have done here, this is known as a common emitter mode. Similarly, you can have common base or common collector modes. Then uh, this emitter side is uh, the input side and the collector side is the output side. Now, the very important thing is how it works, working of the transistor. And for that, you have to remember that uh, emitter is heavily doped and that emitter base junction is forward biased. And so, in that uh, normal operation range, it gives lot of, uh, if it is NPN transistors, the emitter will inject or emit lot of electrons into the base region. So, that is the, that is why the name emitter. So, this emitter emits large number of charge carriers in the base region majority charge carriers from the emitter and when they go into that uh, base region there it is minority charge carriers. And since the base region is very thin most of these uh, carriers they cross over and go into that collector. So, that is why the name collector it collects those uh, charge carriers which are injected by the emitter into the base. And uh, most of them are collected there and some of them of course, they go into the base circuit or they recombine with some hole and some new electron is uh, at some other place is bond is broken and that new electron goes into the base circuit. Essentially that makes that base current. So, this is what uh, we had done uh, earlier. Now, I will just elaborate little bit on this and then we will talk about the characteristic curves. Okay, so, the circuit looks like uh, you have this uh, transistor symbol, I am drawing this common emitter configuration and n p n transistor. So, this is n, this is p, so it goes from p to n, n p n transistor. Then you have this base coming out and then outside you connect the circuit. So, you have a resistance you can call it R B because it is connected to the base. Then you have a battery and uh, then it is connected here to the emitter. What we are drawing is a very simple circuit just to tell the principles the actual circuit will have many other things. And from the collector side again you have some resistance which you called R L or R C and then you have uh, again battery and then this is this. Now, if I look for the characteristics, what are the parameters that I have? This is uh, the voltage that I have applied, this is written as V B B I told you earlier because this battery is connected to the base here. And this battery, this voltage is known as VCC because this side is connected to the collector. And then we have currents, so it is forward bias, so the current will go this way, which we call base current IB. And then we have uh, this uh, emitter current coming like this, so this is emitter current IE and the collector current IC. So, input side, look at the input side. On the input side, if I take this voltage between this point and this point, let us say these two points, which is same as voltage between the base and the emitter. So, this uh, voltage we will write as V B E. This is voltage between the base and the emitter. And then I have this current, so I B is the current. Both of these are on input side, this V B E is uh, the voltage which exists between this base and this uh, emitter and then I B is the current which is going 
in this input side of the circuit and if I draw a curve showing the variation of I B as a function of V B E that is known as input characteristics. And in this I have to keep V C E constant. What is V C E? What is V C E? V C E is voltage between the collector and the emitter. This one, this is the collector here, this is the collector, this is the collector and here is the emitter. So, voltage between these two means voltage between these two points here, this, this point. So, the voltage between this point and this point here that is our V C E, between this point and this point this is our V C E. Okay. So, this figure we will need again and again, maybe I will draw it again, but let us look at this characteristic. If this base emitter voltage is very small, that means this base emitter junction is forward biased by a small voltage remember this is p n junction and therefore, you have some kind of a threshold voltage before that the current does not start. It is uh, diffusion, but then diffusion is uh, against that potential barrier. So, for small biasing forward biasing voltage the that barrier is uh, reduced by a small amount only and uh, that does not uh, allow a significant current. And therefore, what you expect is that the curve should start at a very uh, slow increase note and then once uh, that threshold voltage is achieved then suddenly it increases the normal p n junction thing. So, what is the difference between that normal p n junction characteristic and this characteristic? The difference is in normal p n junction you whatever is uh, emitted whatever is uh, coming from uh, one side is going to the other side. In this particular case whatever is coming from emitter that means the electrons. If the other junction were not there then all these electrons should have gone into this uh, input side into this base circuit, but because of that presence of that collector because of the thin uh, geometry of this uh, base region most of them are going into the collector only small amount is coming in I B. So, the shape remains the same, but uh, the values if you look at the values the values will be very different. If it would have been a single p n junction of the same material say silicon this could have been in some milli amperes 5 milli amperes 10 m milli amperes, but now it can still be in micro amperes it can still be say 5 micro ampere and then 10 micro ampere and 15 micro amperes and so on and the voltages could be say 1 volt here 2 volt here and so on. So, this is known as input characteristics where you draw this I B this base current against this uh, voltage that this junction receives that uh, base and emitter junction receives and uh, keeping this V C E constant remember keeping this V C E constant. So, that is the kind of uh, input characteristics. You change V C E, the shape will remain same, but it will shift. It will be something like this. If you change C V C E, it could be like this and so on. Okay. The other important characteristic is output characteristics. Again drawing the circuit, the same circuit,
Okay. So, this is now the output side and in output side I have uh, this uh, V C E. So, if I take my points here, this is V C E. So, voltage is this V C E and the current is this I C. Why I am putting arrow towards left? Because this is N P N transistor the electrons are being ejected or emitted by this uh, emitter and electrons are being collected. So, electrons are flowing uh, from the collector to this outer circuit and therefore, the current is in the opposite direction. So, the arrow of I C is like this. So, V C E and I C. So, if I plot this relation between these two that will be called output characteristics. So, let me start with uh, this is V C E on this side and I C on this side. So, let us suppose uh, it is uh, sufficiently reversed biased, the collector base junction is sufficiently reversed biased. So, that whatever is uh, emitted by the emitter most of it is taken by the collector and therefore, there is some current. So, a typical value let us say we have 5 volts of uh, this V C E. Remember V C E is not the biasing voltage between collector and base, it is the voltage between collector and emitter. So, V C E is here, this is collector and this is emitter, right. The junction is here, this is our base, this is our base. All right. So, V C E is not the biasing thing, if you call this as 0 voltage and suppose this base is uh, at some 0.7 volt or so. So, this point is 0.7 and if this point is V C E, what you have is V C B, this is the actual junction voltage, this will be your uh, V C E and minus that 0.7 volt or you can write that as V C E minus that V B E and V B E is decided by the input circuit. So, if you put this V C E at 5 volts and if this V B E is 0.7 volt, then the reverse biasing voltage on will be only 4.3 volt, but sufficient, sufficient. So, in that case, so the collector is uh, drawing all these electrons with full efficiency and you have some kind of uh, current which can be maybe somewhere here, let us say some 2, 2 milli amperes or so. What happens if I increase this V C E? If I increase that uh, V C E from 5 volts to say 6 volts by changing that V C C battery voltage that I have applied, the reverse bias voltage will be increased will it draw more electrons? Not significantly, because remember this is going from uh, P side to N side, this is N P N transistor. So, it is going from P side to N side. So, I am only talking of that junction which is reverse bias. So, this is at the positive potential and this is at negative potential and this is giving you some kind of a potential curve as a function of x. If you have some potential, it is let us say this. Now, if the electrons are here with uh, energy which is this much and the electric field will just help it and the electrons are going like this. So, the current is not decided by how much is this uh, depth here, how much is that uh, reverse bias voltage there. The current is decided by how many electrons are here above this level. So, even if you increase this uh, reverse bias voltage the current will remain almost the same. So, it, the curve will go like that and if you reduce that uh, reverse biasing voltage what will happen? Again the current will remain the same, but if you reduce that voltage too much what will happen? Suppose I reduce it to 0, suppose I make this V C E 0, what happens? If V C E is 0, what happens? What will be this V C B? that will be minus 0.7 volts. So, this will become forward biased, 
by 0.7 volts. So, when it was reversed biased, it was helping all those electrons and therefore, the electrons were going towards the collector. Now, it is forward biased and therefore, it will oppose those electrons and therefore, your collector current will be almost 0. It is not allowing, it is putting up a barrier and uh, therefore, the, the current has to go to 0. Same happens if it is not minus 0 0.7, but say minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.3 or even 0. So, in this region, the this uh, junction will not allow those uh, charge carriers to cross and the current will be very, very small. So, at some stage, this has to decrease from here and then it has to go to 0. So, it goes 0 something like this. This particular point where uh, the collector is not able to efficiently draw these uh, electrons or if it is PNP transistors holes is known as saturation. The efficiency is saturated, it is no more drawing it, the reverse bias is not sufficient to draw uh, the same number of same fraction of these charge carriers uh, it was designed for. So, that is known as saturation region. So, in this particular curve, this part will be called saturation region. What has saturated? The capability of the collector to draw those many that fraction of uh, these charge carriers that had saturated and so this is known as saturation region. Now, this is for a particular I B. Hmm? When you draw these uh, output characteristics, when you plot this current I C as a function of this uh, voltage V C E here this V C E here. You keep I B constant. So, all these things is for a constant I B. Base current should be constant. If you are doing this experiment and drawing this characteristic to keep this uh, I B constant, you may have to change this uh, V B B here. So, this V B B you have to change, you have to adjust so that this I B remains constant if you are drawing this output characteristics. What if I increase this I B and then draw this characteristic curve again? Suppose this is for I B is equal to, uh, let us say this is for I B is equal to 10 micro amperes. What if I increase I B? to 20 micro amperes and let us uh, start again with this uh, 5 volt point. This V C E is 5 volts, I B has been increased and how did I increase I B? By increasing this uh, battery voltage V B B here. So, if you increase that, you increase this forward biasing here and then the current uh, exponentially grows. So, you can change so, physically what has happened physically you have increased that uh, forward biasing voltage a little bit and more electrons are being ejected, emitted, injected by this emitter into this uh, region. But collector is ready at 5 volts or at sufficiently high reverse bias uh, uh, voltage, the collector is ready to receive all those electrons which are coming, new electrons which are coming with the same efficiency. And therefore, proportionately I C will also increase. If I B has uh, doubled, then uh, almost in the same proportion I C will also double and then the remaining discussion remains the same. So, if this was 2 milli amperes, now you will have uh, let us say 4 milli amperes, your curve will be like this. And again, once it uh, comes to that region 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volt region for silicon, where uh, the reverse biasing is either very small or it has gone to forward biasing zone, you will have saturation. Hmm? The efficiency of drawing these uh, charge carriers by the collector has gone down 
and the ultimately it be that current becomes 0. So, this uh, curve will be again it will be joining this point here and will go like this. Similarly, you will have uh, more characteristics you can draw for different uh, values of I B you can draw the things this could be 20 micro amperes that could be well looks like more than 30 maybe 35 or 32 uh, micro amperes let me write something. So, like that so, these kind of uh, characteristics are known as output characteristics. And uh, why they are drawn why do people draw these characteristics this is because when the transistor is used in the circuit and in that circuit all vol voltages and currents uh, they change we know that what kind of response this transistor is going to give. So, that is why these characteristics are drawn. You can draw another set of characteristics which are known as mutual characteristics or transfer characteristics in which you take one parameter from the input side another parameter from the output side. You can take V B E that input uh, side voltage between emitter and base and ask what is the effect on uh, I C collector current or you can uh, just take I C and I B and ask what is the relationship. So, these kind of uh, characteristics can also be drawn and they are known as mutual or transfer characteristics. Okay, now, let me go for the applications. So, the most widely used application and transistor is uh, primarily known for that is amplifier as an amplifier. So, transistor as an amplifier. What is amplifier? That everyone knows what is amplifier. If I am giving uh, this lecture there is a microphone out here and whatever pressure variation in air I am producing that pressure variation is driving some kind of a diaphragm here and that is uh, converting uh, into uh, converting that uh, pressure variation into electrical voltage variations. So, that we called a signal is generated a voltage signal is generated, but that voltage signal the amplitude of that signal could be very small. At that uh, other end at the receiver's end how you are listening to this lecture this uh, voltage signal is amplified by some amplifier the, the variations in voltages as a function of time as I am speaking I am creating uh, variation in pressure as a function of time and the voltage signal uh, will just uh, have that same pattern, but now it will be change in voltage as a function of time and uh, that has to be amplified and that amplified voltage signal that will drive another uh, diaphragm of the speaker and from there uh, that the sound will reach to the uh, listeners. So, that is the purpose of amplification you have some kind of a uh, signal a small signal whatever I would not be able to draw it uh, to the scale. So, this is the time here and then uh, you have this voltage here right this is the signal voltage and then uh, you, what you want is to amplify you you want to keep the relative magnitudes uh, same but uh, all this is to be stretched if you are on a, on some kind of a software file maybe you just uh, stretch that uh, vertically and you get the same amplified signal okay so that same variation in time but then the output should be of the same variety but of course this uh, vertical scale should be very very different so that's the kind of uh, thing that we need for amplification and how do we use transistors to do this amplification? Well, uh, simple the circuit is uh, of course, I am again drawing a very schematic type of uh, circuit the actual circuits are very different just to understand the principles. that signal which we want uh, to be amplified that is to be added on the input side. 
So, you have this uh, resistance uh, R B is there and then you have that uh, V B B. So, together with that V B B you have to add this signal. So, this is that signal, this is that signal small voltage variations in millivolts let us say the bias volt V B B which is here may be in volts 2 volts 3 volts like that, but then uh, the signal is uh, very small as compared to that and it is time dependent. So, now your uh, uh, voltage input voltage is becoming time dependent and this uh, it is riding on this, uh, this thing. So, here we put this uh, signal. Then we have uh, again uh, I emphasize this is only a schematic drawing. and we take our output from here, this is R L. So, qualitatively let me again uh, understand it using our uh, output characteristics. So, let us draw two characteristics, one corresponding to some I B, this is our uh, I C and this is our V C E. Okay. And suppose we are somewhere here comfortably reversed biased we are somewhere here and let us say at some instant you have uh, some value of this uh, signal and therefore there is some value of this uh, veb uh, this this voltage here and correspondingly there is a current ib and for that current let us say this current is ib maybe let us say 10 micro ampere here like that. And as time passes this uh, because of this voltage signal which is time dependent this V B E changes okay. at some instant it is V B E and then uh, at, at a later instant at time t plus delta e this becomes V B E prime because this signal voltage has changed, let us say it has increased. So, what will happen? If this uh, biasing voltage has increased, you will have larger forward current, you have more uh, injection of those charge carriers from emitter to base, but remember the collector is ready to receive them, it is uh, very well reversed biased and therefore, the collector current will increase and the collector current will increase and where will it go? Just uh, using this uh, output characteristics you can determine. If this goes from let us say 10 micro ampere to 12 micro ampere, if the uh, you are going from this characteristics on this characteristics, has V C E changed? Think carefully because of the signal, this uh, biasing of emitter base junction that has changed, V B E has changed okay. because of this current I B has changed. It has gone from 10 micro ampere to 12 micro ampere. Is V C E also changed? Yes, it is changed because I C has also changed, this current I C has also changed. Now, you have larger I C because you have larger injection of charge carriers and larger collection by the collector and therefore, this I C has also changed. And if I C has changed, then uh, this V C E is also changed because if you look at this circuit, this is V C C, this is the battery voltage that we are giving and I C is going like this, this is I C and therefore, V C E is equal to V C C and minus I C times R L. So, if I C has increased V C E will decrease. So, one thing is if I look at the output characteristics from uh, I B equal to 10 micro ampere, I have gone to I B equal to 
12 micro ampere from this curve I am I have gone to this curve, but I have also changed this V C E little bit, but if you are uh, well uh, within this uh, zone this is uh, not close to saturation then uh, it does not matter your current does not change uh, significantly. If this current here is few milli amperes let us say this is uh, let us say 4 milli amperes and then this is 5 milli amperes. So, it does not matter whether you are here or whether you are here or you are here or you are here your V C E is changed, but does not matter the current will remain the same. What will happen to the output voltage? The output voltage V O the output voltage V O this is the output voltage also this V C E is the output voltage if I am taking voltage from here. So, this is a V C C and minus I C R L change that change in output voltage will be minus delta I C times R L to your this uh, battery voltage is same. So, what we are looking for in this output we are looking for that variation there is some DC because of that VCC and all that, but we are looking at that time dependent part. So, that change delta V O is just this much and uh, you can see here delta I C is in milli amperes and R L could be in uh, whatever kilo ohm or, or hundred few hundreds ohms and like that. So, a small change in this input side because of the signal is creating uh, some change in I B and then that is creating a much larger change in I C and therefore, much larger change in the output voltage which is now minus delta I C R L. The minus sign is there that means, the output of this is pi uh, at pi phase difference with the input. If your uh, input is like this, then the output will be enlarged, but it will be like this enlarged and uh, inverted with, because your current is going towards left in this. So, this is how the amplification essentially takes place. We can do some more analysis uh, on this. Uh, you can uh, look at that uh, input side also and on the input side if I say that this is my V i let us say that this is my V i input voltage let us say this is my input voltage. So, the change in input voltage is because of the signal. So, I can uh, write this uh, V b e V b e is equal to let us write V b e V b e is equal to V b b and minus I B R B. Check in the circuit what is V B E? V B E is this uh, actual voltage on this uh, base emitter junction. So, you have uh, V B B means uh, including the signal, including the signal this V B B is uh, ok. Let me write plus V S plus V S. So, V B B plus V S is the voltage here and then uh, I B is there, R B is there. So, there is a potential drop here I B times R B. So, uh, subtract that, that will become this V B E. Okay. And so, you can write that delta V B E is equal to minus delta I B times R B and uh, whatever is change in this uh, signal ok delta V s whatever is change in in your signal in that time delta t. So, this is uh, is like that and uh, V delta V B e if you can neglect if you neglect what is the justification? that uh, remember that uh, input characteristics is like this you cannot change your uh, voltage uh, too much here. This is your uh, V B E and this is your I B. So, you cannot change this uh, V B E too much if you change it too much the current will be very very high and your, your transistor will be destroyed. 
So, this delta V B e could be very small and if you neglect that what happens? What you have is change in your signal is equal to delta I B times R B. Look at these two equations. What is that uh, delta V s? Uh, that is your signal, that is how the signal is changing. So, that is the change in the input voltage, your signal signal which is uh, time dependent and output is right here. So, let me write what is the voltage gain? Which is delta V naught divided by your delta V s signal look at back delta V naught is a minus delta I c times R L. So, let me write that minus delta I c times R L and delta V s delta V s is here this is delta I b times R b this one delta I b times R b. So, it is delta I b times R b and this is what uh, we had uh, defined as beta. This is what we had defined at beta. So, this is beta A c and times R L divided by R B. So, that is the voltage gain and remember for a transistor this beta D c and A c are uh, similar if you are in the comfortable reverse biased and forward biased zone. This, uh, this could be 50, 100 like that 50 to uh, few hundreds and so on. So, you have a voltage gain here that is how the amplification works. Okay. Now, let us go for the another application which is uh, known as switching application transistor can be used as a switch. So, let us see what it is. The same uh, diagram, the same diagram you have this uh, transistor in common emitter mode. why I am drawing so many lines here and only I am showing three cells here and only one cell here. Nothing uh, great about the numbers 1 and 3, but I am showing more voltage on VCC part and less voltage on VBE part. That is because you have to reverse bias this junction collector base junction with at a larger much larger voltage then you have to forward bias this uh, emitter base junction. So, that is why I just to remind that that is the case uh, I, I draw this kind of thing. Now, let us uh, suppose I, I do change this suppose I change this V B B and let us say this is our input V i and of course, our output is the same V o. Okay. Now, if I plot this uh, V o versus V i what happens? Start with V i very small, start with V i very small 0 let us say 0. So, that means I am forward biasing this uh, base uh, emitter junction with uh, almost 0 voltage, I am not biasing it at all and therefore, uh, the this uh, nothing will start. If you do not forward bias this junction emitter base junction, this emitter is uh, not uh, injecting charge carriers into the base uh, region, this I diffusion is same as I drift and you know all those things are very, very small 
and therefore, I b is 0. So, I b is 0. So, if I b is 0, then uh, correspondingly I c is also 0. Of course, it is reversed bias. So, some reverse bias current can still be there and so on, but it is very, very small. So, this uh, uh, I c is also 0. So, that, that gives me I c is almost 0. And if I c is almost 0, V out remember this was V c c minus uh, and then I c times R l. You had this uh, I c here and R l here. So, potential drop across this will be R l times I c and this is V c c here. So, this V o that I am talking of is this V c c and minus I c R l. So, that is this and I c is almost 0 that means, V o is V c c. Okay. Essentially, you do not have a current on this uh, R l, you do not have a current on this R l and therefore, whatever is voltage here is the same as the voltage here. So, this V o is same as V c c that is the message. So, if I put it on this diagram, this will be somewhere here V c c this point is V c c, this point is V c c. Then I slightly increase this V i. If I slightly increase this V i from 0, once again that threshold is not reached. Forward biasing diffusion currents start significantly increasing only after that threshold. For silicon it is around 0 0.6, 0 0.7, for germanium little less. So, even if you increase this V i little bit, the transistor or that emitter based junction is not really working, it is not really giving you charge carriers, uh, not a large amount of diffusion is taking place there and therefore, the same story will remain and hence uh, this curve will go like that. To some point where this forward biasing of uh, emitter base junction is now significant and it is giving you currents. And once that is there, once you have reached that point, what will happen? After that, if you increase this V i further, what will happen? Now you have everything functions well and you have a current, collector current. And once you have collector current, then your V o will decrease. Once you have this I c. V o is V c c minus I c R l and therefore, it will decrease. So, it will go like that. But as V o decreases, remember what is V o? V o is nothing but V c e. This V o is nothing but V c e collector emitter voltage. This, uh, this end of this uh, V o is here this end is here, this is the emitter one and the other end of V o is here that is the this uh, collector. So, this V c e. So, if V o has decreased, V c e has decreased. So, that reverse biasing is going down. Previously, it was reversed bias by say 4 volts, now it is 3 volts, 2.5 volts, 2.1 volts and so on. As you increase this uh, current I c, V o will keep on decreasing that reverse biasing will become weaker and weaker and at some stage they will uh, become uh, uh, almost the same the voltage of uh, base and collector will again become the same and uh, even if you if you go further you are uh, in the saturation zone it is not properly reversed by sufficiently reversed bias, it has gone into the saturation zone, it is no more drawing more currents. So, even if you are increasing this input voltage, uh, the I c remains the same and therefore, your curve will be look will look like this. So, you can draw three regions, you can draw three regions this region uh, nothing is happening. So, this you can call cutoff region and here this has uh, reached that uh, saturation uh, that efficiency has gone down, reverse biasing is very weak or even it, it has become forward biased. So, this is that uh, saturation zone and this middle one is called the active zone. 
even on output characteristics you can draw that. Even here this was the saturation zone, this was saturation zone we talked about this, it is not sufficiently reversed bias to draw the electrons and this is active zone. this is called active zone, this, these, these ones, these ones are called active zones, this part is called active zones, because now it is sufficiently reverse bias and it is active, it is active to draw those electrons. Okay. So, in the cutoff zone, this V O is V C C, what happens in saturation zone? If V i is very large, if V i is quite large, what happens? you are in this saturation zone. Okay. If V i is very large, you are in this zone, in this saturation zone. So, once you are in this zone, what happens? Your V o is very small. So, your V o is very small, is almost 0. So, look at these two, look at these two. By controlling this V i, if I put my V i here, V i is very small, almost 0 and I have output as V c c large output, large output. Whereas, if V i is here, if I increase this V i, then uh, it has gone into saturation and V o is very small. So, I can uh, change this uh, output voltage from a high voltage to a low voltage, low voltage uh, whatever uh, threshold I put by just changing this V i and using this whole circuit. So, in digital electronics, you need uh, points where uh, the you have to put that point as 0 or 1, that means the voltage should be a high voltage or a low voltage and that switching from 1 to 0, 0 to 1, that switching that can be done using this transistor controlling this input voltage uh, and uh, changing this input voltage from the cutoff zone to the saturation zone. That means, from very low to very high, very low very high means uh, say 0 to 5 volts uh, and so on. You can make that switching of that point from high voltage to low voltage 0 to 1, 1 to 0. So, that is how it works as a switch.